The 20th season of Porsche Carrera Cup Great Britain kicks off at Donington Park with a new driver to the championship and a new team to the championship on pole position. Gus Burton it is with Kian Dewis alongside. Row two is Adam Smalley, the Porsche junior, and Nathan Harrison for company ahead of Theo Edgerton. And then Matthew Graham back in the championship. He's on row three. Mikko Stanley now a pro. He's been recategorized this weekend. Out qualified Will Martin on row four. Seb Morris, British GT champion, is on row five alongside Will Aspin. And Jack Bartholomew is on row six with the reigning Pro-Am champion, Ryan Ratcliffe. Charles Rainford comes next, ahead of another newcomer, Hugo Ellis. Another newcomer, Oliver White, Formula Ford hero, is on row eight, alongside Charles Bateman. Then it's Jake Giddings and Josh Stanton on row nine of the grid. He's the best qualified AM ahead of Mark Radcliffe, who returns. The reigning AM champ, Justin Sherwood, is next, ahead of Nigel Rice and Michael Clark. And then three drivers at the back with a 10-second delayed start for a technical infringement. Angus Whiteside with qualified 17th, and Peter Kyle Henney with Peter Mangion rounding out the grid. We are set to go racing. The 350th race in the history of Porsche Carrera Cup Great Britain. Lights go red for these brand new cars. The lights go out and the 992 iteration of the 911 GT3 Cup blast away with a good getaway by Gus Burton. Kian Dewis on the outside line as they dive down a red gate. Dewis locks up lots of Michelin tire smoke as he scrabbles around the outside line, but he can't do it. Has to slot back in behind. Adam Smalley was third going into red gate, but he's also dropped back a fraction to a good starting Matty Graham as they drop downhill. The top two getting away then. These cars, these new cars that kick out 510 brake horsepower, very popular with the drivers and more drama going down towards the old hairpin because there Charles Rainford locked up, slithered up the inside, made contact but just about got away with it. This is Seb Morris's view up through Schwantz Curve. Now to the right of McLean's corner and Seb Morris fifth. Good getaway for him because he started ninth on the grid, making good progress. Side by side for the lead, Gus Burton clatters his way up the inside of Kian Dewis who goes off the road and into the gravel and they're all going to come streaming past him. Gus Burton may end up having to explain himself for that, we'll see, but either way he will lead at the end of the opening lap with Adam Smalley then in second spot. Adam who is the uh, reigning Ginetta GT4 Super Cup champion and he comes into this championship of course as the man that has become the uh, Porsche junior driver having won that scholarship last year so Gus Burton leads Adam Smalley at the end of that one with Matty Graham third and then the reigning sprint challenge champion the Porsche Cayman series in fourth Theo Edgerton replay here up the inside dives Gus Burton bit of a lock up ran deep into the corner and there was nowhere really for Kian Dewis to go he got forced out wide through the gravel and we'll see what pans out after that that's Edgerton diving up the inside of Graham for third goes through goes wide and back at him comes Matty Graham then absolutely together they run up towards Schwartz Kerr but Theo Edgerton has managed to keep the red line racing car at bay really brave move sent it up the inside and it worked for him so Gus Burton it is leading the way Smalley second and now Theo Edgerton third after this move look there was the gap on the inside committed to it used the curb bounced over it and just about managed to hang on to it really bold effort that so the race leaders then come down towards the chicane and Adam Smalley, it is, getting himself up onto the tail of the race leader. Further back there, you see, going through the car in the hands of Will Martin, the Richardson Racing entry. Now, Will has been a race winner in the championship, and he's up into 10th. And Ollie White's debut in the championship has come to a rather early end. And there's drama at the chicane. There's a car off in the background as well. And there it is, Michael Clark, newcomer to the championship as well. They am in the Veluga car off the road. He's got a puncture, has he? Have a look at that right rear. Yes, he has. So Michael Clark with a puncture and comes out. Yep, there it is. The tar pops. He spins around. He will have to... Oh, he's missed the pit in. He's got to limp round for a whole lap, in fact, but he does get going again. But Michael Clark with a punctured tyre in strife. So a lot's happened already. We're only on lap three out of 23 in this 350th race in the history of Carrera Cup GB, the 20th year of the championship. Gap between the race leaders, eight tenths of a second last time around between Gus Burton and Adam Smalley. Now Theo Edgerton up into third place, becoming a man to watch now in the JTR car. Heads down towards the chicane. And Theo Edgerton, who was the real standout driver last year in sprint challenge for the 718 Caymans, comes through the chicane. We've got, as ever, the Pro-Am and the Am classes to look at. And Pro-Am is being headed by Nathan Harrison right now, with the leading Am being Josh Stanton. Replay of the start, on board with Seb Morris. Brilliant getaway look, picks off Mika Stanley, finds a gap on the inside, carves his way through the traffic. 
and dives down towards Redgate, having picked off places. Ahead on the outside, 27, there is Nathan Harrison, and the road opens up ahead for Seb Morris. Through he goes, plunges downhill, the Team Parker racing car, and there just up the road, Adam Smalling goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Matty Graham, so that is Seb Morris, ninth on the grid to fifth, even by the time they get down to the old hairpin. Now, there is Theo Edgerton, he's third, he's another of the rookies. And Matty Graham, who is a welcome returnee to the championship, he's been a race winner back in 2020, plunges downhill now. There he is, number 16, in the Red Line racing car, one of the many operated by Simon Leonard's team. And Gus Burton, for Century Motorsport, with whom he won the British GT4 title last year, stepping into the championship. So this will be a dream debut all round, pole win for both driver and team. That would be quite something, if Gus Burton can hang on to it turns his way now up towards the double apex right of Coppice. He took the Ginetta GT4 Super Cup title with five wins as well, going back to 2020, courtesy of Century. Now, a good little scrap is raging on here, look, where you've got uh, Will Martin, Nathan Harrison, Mika Stanley and Kean Jewis. Now, this is where Kean lined up to have a go for a place last time. Is he going to do it again? Mika Stanley just there ahead of him. Impressive in Pro-Am last year was Mika, and he's got that spin pre-race out of his system, defending from the former single-seater gun, Kean Jewis. Through the chicane they come now, up towards the timing line. Race lead gap is down fractionally again to six tenths of a second with now nine laps in the book. We start lap ten. You're looking at the fight for sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth as they dive into Redgate and all the pressure now is coming onto the shoulders of Will Martin. But equally, Harrison and Stanley trying to attack and defend at the same time. For the moment, though, Kean Jewis has got himself just a little bit stuck. Can't yet find a way onto terms to get past Stanley. And because he's defending, so number 10, Will Martin holding himself up a little bit. And it means the gap to those ahead is widening all the time. Seb Morris, fifth, getting away in the distance there up the road. Through McLean's they turn, now the run into Coppice. So Will Martin under attack. Now, Nathan Harrison, bear in mind, yes, he's fighting for position, but equally, he is a very comfortable leader within the Pro-Am category. So he doesn't want to get involved in a battle that's going to cost him an opportunity to win that. Down to the chicane they come, and four of them in a line. Now, Kean Jewis doesn't attack into the chicane. Has he got the exit speed so that he can challenge down to Redgate? We'll see in a moment, because he breaks the beam at the timing line. To the eye, he's not quite close enough, but if he's really brave on the brakes, but the line's covered off already, look, by Mika Stanley, who brings the car towards the middle of the road, and that denies Jewis a chance to make a move there. Kean now in the silver car, thinks about the inside through the crane of curves. Stepped it up onto the curb, but he couldn't do it. What about the old hairpin? Lines up for the move, this is it, on the inside line. Curb and all through he goes, bounces almost into the side of Mika Stanley that forces him wide. Mika fights back. He's not taking this line down and squeezes Jewis out wide, and he's redone it. He's taken the place back. Fantastic racing, this. So Mika Stanley goes through, back up into eighth place. Key and Jewis did rather dive bomb him, but Mika Stanley was able, with equally good racecraft, to get himself back ahead, and Jewis has got to do it all over again. The Team Parker racing car then from the outside of the front row of the grid struggling to make the progress now after that trip through the gravel early on. This was the move from Jewis up the inside, bounced over the kerb, that forced him out wide. So Mika Stanley ran out wide as a consequence. But Mika then up the kerb. Oh, yes, there was contact. That is why Kean Jewis was forced out wide going towards Schwantz's kerb because Stanley got into the back of him. Call that one all if you wish. Right, after all of that, Nathan Harrison here turns into Redgate and up the inside. Kean Jewis goes through because Will Martin, look, number 10, has fallen back. So Harrison, Stanley and now Jewis have gone past Martin. So Will Martin has had a drama. That is why he's fallen back through the pack. And now he's on the attack again to get past Kean Jewis. So Jewis has gained a place, but he's still stuck there behind Mika Stanley. And this is what happened. Coming down towards the chicane, a big, big lock-up through the gravel went Will Martin back onto the circuit. And then the car got all sideways and he lost momentum. So that was three places lost, effectively. As Stanley goes wide, Kean Jewis lines up for a go on the inside line. There's more contact between the two of them. Jewis goes straight on over the kerb and into the gravel, and that could be race over. Kean Jewis straight on at Coppice. He's not yet dug himself out the other side. So there he is, still going, still going. He's got the momentum. He knows that gravel trap well. He's been in it once already, but down to the chicane. Stanley fends off the recovering Will Martin. 
now there's also Will Aspin joining in that little battle as well as they come over the line. He's much calmer at the front. Gus Burton leads Adam Smalley. Third is Theo Edgerton. Fourth is Matty Graham. Fifth is Seb Morris. This is the fight for seventh behind Nathan Harrison, where you've got Mika Stanley just ahead of Will Martin and just behind him, Will Aspin. Battle of Wills there. Now, these are the race leaders and the gap just over half a second between them. We're on lap 13 out of 23. And the fight for third is even closer. Theo Edgerton has been caught now by Matty Graham. It's another dramatic season in store, then, isn't it, for Porsche Carrera Cup GB and these new, even more powerful cars catching out one or two of the drivers, but equally generating really frantic racing. Michael Stanley then having just extended the advantage a touch over Will Martin. Uh, Will, in turn, is under attack now from Will Aspin. Now, Aspin is the nearest rival to Nathan Harrison within Pro-Am, but he's got a lot of traffic to get through before he can even think about getting onto terms. So it's a pretty tough race right now for Will, but it's good learning experience for him. Don't forget, Nathan Harrison was in the championship last year. Will Aspin new this season. The rookie award, part of the championship, with a good prize fund for the winner. Down towards Redgate, they dive once more. Eight tenths of a second, the lead margin, it's gone up. And nose to tail, Wills Martin and Aspin, who in turn are now being caught by Jack Bartholomew, next in the queue, another graduate from the Sprint Challenge, the Cayman Series, and he's bringing Jake Giddings, another GT4 racer, with him. Behind Jake Giddings, there's Charles Rainford, and then newcomer Hugo Ellis in the Napa colours, familiar in touring car racing this year, but also now adorning the JTR car in Carrera Cup GB. So this line of cars is building all the time. Will Aspin just touches the tail of Will Martin's car there. Nose to tail, they now run up the hill. Will Aspin for Team Parker. And ahead in the Comline Richardson racing car is Will Martin. They could not be closer. Kean Jewis, by the way, did get out of the gravel as over the curb and onto the grass goes Will Aspin. That means now Jack Bartholomew lines up for a go on the inside. He's got to break as late as he dares. Tries to make the move. Does claim the inside line, but he can't take the place. So Jack Bartholomew has to sit tight, and that puts him under attack from Jake Giddings, who is level as they come over the line. While all this is kicking off, it is Josh Stanton in 15th leading the AMs, and Keon Jewis recovered for 16th after his trip through the gravel. Bartholomew fends off Giddings then, rounding Redgate, but only just. Right now, there are battles everywhere. Giddings in the yellow and white car to the outside line as they dive down through the Craner curves, but he has to slot back in behind Jack Bartholomew. Jack, who's raced in single-seaters as well as GT cars. He's raced in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo in the Middle East, in Asia, the Sprint Challenge in the, the Caymans last year, and now graduates to the big league into Carrera Cup GB. There is the AM leader, that's Josh Stanton. Change of team for him this year, because he goes to JTR, and showing great pace, well clear at the moment, from Justin Sherwood, multiple champion, and then... Behind him, the returning Mark Radcliffe back into the series after a few years away. So the race leaders work lap number 16. The gap is six tenths of a second. And Josh Stanton in the middle of this fight then has lost out now to Kean Jewis. So he's dropped into 16th place overall. That up from the back of the grid is Angus Whiteside behind him. Another of the rookies and Whiteside who is in the Pro-Am class easily through on the inside line. Here are the leaders. There's a driving standards flag being offered to Peter Mangian up from the back of the grid, but the one-two here is Gus Burton ahead of Adam Smalley, both new to the championship for third place. It remains even closer. Six tenths between the leaders and just three tenths, effectively, between third and fourth, where Theo Edgerton keeps Matty Graham at bay. Edgerton new to the championship, but actually more experienced in terms of Porsches than the two ahead of him because he's raced for two seasons now in the Caymans, in the 718 Cayman GT4 Club Sport, but the leaders into the chicane to the end of lap number 16. Are oh, they going to encounter traffic before the very end? One of the slower cars here, Peter Mangion, has been given that driving standards flag. And Peter Kyle Henney is behind him, so this is fifth and sixth in the AM class. Both of them up from the back of the grid. Peter Kyle Henney hoping to do a, a full season if business allows, business commitments allow. And as they go up then through the approach to the old hairpin. Up through Schwantz Curve, they turn. Race leaders go through. And Adam Smalley is, as the race wears on, 
just creeping up onto the tail of the race leader, is he not? So that margin that was six tenths at the end of the previous lap to the eye has come down. In the first sector, it was down by a tenth. Might not sound a lot, but it all does matter. And if here, Adam has got a bit more life left in the tyres, that is going to pay dividends. End of the second sector then, and there, another two tenths taken out. So, yes, Adam Smalley is now definitely mounting the attack as they come up through the chicane, heading towards the timing line once more. Gus Burton will go through in the lead. But he, can he hang on in there for this dream debut, if you like, in the championship? They start lap 18 out of 23 now. Six laps to go. Down through Redgate corner, the margin four tenths of a second. Edgerton third, keeping Matty Graham at bay. Bit lonely fifth is Seb Morris. And then sixth, Nathan Harrison still leading in Pro-Am. Out of Hollywood, down through the Craner curves, they sweep once again. So Gus Burton now can see in his mirrors where Adam Smalley is. He'll be aware of where his car might be strong, where it might be struggling, both in terms of the setup, both in terms of the grip, the feel, and also, of course, in terms of the corners around the circuit. Now, a bit of damage on Will Martin's car. He's got Will Aspin right up behind him once more. Then also Jack Bartholomew is in this mix as well. But uh, Will Martin having a pretty frantic race. And a lock-up isn't going to help as he goes deep into McLean's. And Will Aspin goes through and they all come streaming past. Bartholomew is ahead of him now. Giddings goes through. Three places lost and another one might beckon there. Will Martin turns through the right of Coppice. Charles Rainford and then Hugo Ellis behind him. And this for a previous race winner in Carrera Cup GB is all unravelling around Will Martin, sad to say. The race leaders have gone through now on to lap number 19. Peter Mangion is set to be given a penalty for consistent track limit abuses. Dust settles in the background as this battle pack comes then out of the chicane and down towards Redgate. This is the fight now for eighth place, headed by... Will Aspin, Charles Rainford, number 99, race winner at the recent Goodwood members meeting, tries to get himself up and past the somewhat dog-eared car now of Will Martin, but he couldn't do it there. Charles is another in Pro-Am, and he runs third in the class. The target for him for a place, Will Aspin, who's getting away up the road now. So there's going to be much for the teams to discuss, and one or two with a few repairs to do prior to race two, coming up later on in the day at Donington, as there to the inside line looks Charles Rainford. But again, the CCK Motorsport car not quite able to make that move against the Richardson racing entry in the hands of Will Martin. The race leading gap then still hovers around the half a second mark as this fight rages on, coming out of Coppice. There are the leaders, and in fact, half a second over the line. Gus Burton has run wide at Redgate, and the gap has come down between them. So Adam Smalley now, with perhaps cleaner tyres, may fancy his chances, but the car looking a bit nervous at the old hairpin. This is Gus Burton in replay, wide over the kerb, onto the dirt, and there, as the car bounces, it snaps sideways as it regains contact with the tarmac. So Gus Burton saves it. Regroups, tries to get away, and I would suggest does get away slightly from Adam Smalley. But is this now starting to suggest that the pressure is having an effect on the race leader? Because there, then, the car in the hands of Adam Smalley, the Duckham's US are racing with red line entry, bearing down on him. Big, big lockup for Gus Burton. Off the road he goes through the gravel, and that's going to make his tyres really grubby, and he's going to lose in the race lead because through now, past him goes Adam Smalley, and Gus Burton, having worked so hard for so long, loses out at the end. Eventually, the pressure does tell, and past him goes Adam Smalley. Now, Gus Burton will try to fight back. Can he apply the pressure and force a mistake out of Smalley, as has just happened to him? Let's see as they drop downhill. He's not going to be able to do it on pure pace, I don't think, because Smalley's car has looked the stronger as the race has worn on. And look, he's getting away now. I think it is that maybe Adam asked a bit less of his tyres early on and he's got life late race. Also, look, Edgerton is closing on Gus Burton. Now, here's the replay down to the chicane. Big, big lockup. That will have done the tyres no good at all either. Gets his foot off the brake. The car goes on the line it's committed to through the gravel. It doesn't have the momentum nor quite as much grip coming off the corner. May well have a big flat spot on that front right as well after that. Through the gravel he goes. It's a bit like a rallycross circuit now, looking at uh, the amount of gravel that's been brought back onto the road coming out of the chicane, because quite a few have had their moments there. Right, this is about to be the end of uh, lap number 21. 
Leader goes through, Adam Smalley on target for a maiden victory. Gus Burton will be absolutely kicking himself, but he's got to try and hang on to second place. Theo Edgerton right there behind him. It may well be that Gus is also going to have a word about the opening lap with Kean Jewis as well at the end of all of this. It's been a busy race for him as well, but look at the way that Smalley is getting away. It was 1.4 seconds over the line. He's disappearing into the distance as now Theo Edgerton starts to crawl all over the back of Gus Burton's car there. Through Schwantz curve they go. Theo Edgerton lining up perhaps for a dive to the inside. No, couldn't think about that because it was covered off nice and early by Gus Burton. Matty Graham in fourth place, perhaps just waiting for it to end in tears ahead of him and then pick up the pieces. Edgerton looks to the outside, tries to go wide in and tight out. Yes, it has worked for him. Look, gets squeezed towards the curb on the inside, but he's done it and so has Matty Graham as well. So Gus Burton, having led more laps than anybody, now drops to fourth place. Adam Smalley is about to come through to start the last lap then. Theo Edgerton up into second, up into third, Matty Graham. And there with Trim flying, Gus Burton is going to be really, really demoralised now. Down in fourth, drove so well early on in the race, but the car just losing pace as the race wears on. He's well clear of Seb Morris, who's a distant fifth, but it's a case of what could have been for Gus Burton as the car's now plunged downhill for the last time. Adam Smalley it is, the race leader by a whopping three seconds. This is Seb Morris's view. Nobody can chase after, really, because he's a long way back, like uh, four seconds or so, away from the cars ahead of him. There is the effort from Jack Bartholomew that works to go eighth against Will Aspin. So Jack Bartholomew gains ground, gains a place. Mark Radcliffe is also being a five sec uh, given a five-second penalty for track limit abuses, but Jack Bartholomew, another driver coming good late race then, gains that place there with traffic up the road ahead is Adam Smalley. He can afford to back off and let that traffic go, I would have thought, because he's got a huge advantage. Down to the chicane he comes, chequered flag at the ready, and the 350th Carrera Cup GB race is going to be won by Adam Smalley in impressive style. Adam Smalley wins then for the Duckham's US are racing with Redline team ahead of Theo Edgerton and Matty Graham. Third, fourth goes to Gus Burton, the man that led more laps than anybody, and fifth to Seb Morris. of the 911 GT3 Cup blast away. Side by side for the lead. Gus Burton clatters his way up the inside of Kean Jewis, who goes off the road and into the gravel. That's Edgerton diving up the inside of Graham for third, goes through. Jewis goes straight on over the curb and into the gravel, and that could be race over. Big, big lockup for Gus Burton. Off the road he goes through the gravel, and that's going to make his tyres really grubby, and he's going to lose him the race lead. Gets squeezed towards the kerb on the inside, but he's done it, and so has Matty Graham as well. And the 350th Carrera Cup GB race is going to be won by Adam Smalley in impressive style. Morley, who leads the table from Theo Edgerton and Matty Graham. Fourth is Gus Burton from Seb Morris, then Mika Stanley ahead of Jack Bartholomew and Jake Giddings. Oliver White in ninth from Will Martin. In the Pram category, Nathan Harrison leads from Will Aspin and Hugo Ellis, whilst the amateur class headed by Josh Stanton from Justin Sherwood and Mark Radcliffe.